But you're about to see a passionate, dedicated, and trained people practicing and preparing to enter an extreme sporting event that may change their lives. Do not try this on your own without necessary experience and supervision. Breathe in, breathe out. This moment's what it's all about. Born to be great, your gold awaits. Don't hesitate. Accelerate. Set for the race. Ain't to give it all I got. Mind is set. Gonna reach the high spot. Working hard in order to fulfill my goal. Nothing can stop me from getting what I'm going for. That's being great. I was working till the same. So I won't hesitate. Gotta get to first place. Hands on the golden plate. I concentrate. Won't hit the brake. Just move forward. Accelerate. Welcome back to Accelerate. Last week, we met 8-year-old gymnast Kaylee Anders and saw how she preps for her upcoming national gymnastics event. She's got a bit of downtime now, so we'll catch up with her next week. We also saw how 15-year-old Formula V driver Byron Mitchell gets himself ready for his upcoming events. In other racing formulas, the car's capacity and design can influence winning or losing. But in Formula V, Winning is based almost entirely on the driver's skills. Byron has three important race meetings left over the next three weeks. We're going to find out if he's got what it takes to maintain his lead in his championship and bring home the title. I'm going to be doing the next three races over the next three weeks. First up, I'll be racing in a Formula Libre national race meeting. And then the following two weeks will be the two regional race meetings. Currently, I'm leading the championship. The nationals will give me some good practice towards the regionals. I only race nationals when they are in the province. My main focus is regional competitions. If I win my next two regional race meetings, I will be the overall champion for the season. And that means a lot to me because this is my very first season racing Formula V. This is a, a normal car. It has four... Um, brake calipers on each wheel. It's a four-cylinder motor, which isn't fuel injected. It's run by um, carburetion. As you can see, we've got the carbs here. And this right here is the air box, which um, intakes all of our air as we're going down the straight. Then on the side here, inside these pods, we have our radiators, which keeps our motor cool. Um, here are our tire mounts, these funny looking things on the side of the car tire mounts. That helps us um, set up our wheel alignment and all of that. And it may not um, seem like it, but wheel alignment and setup of the car is probably one of the most important things um, people can do in these cars. So if we have a look in the car here, sit on my petrol tank, but the steering wheel has a simple um, release, quick release on the back here. So in case you're ever caught in a fire or if you're upside down in the car, you just pull that and slide the steering wheel off so you can mop out easier, something easier. So we have our dashboard um, that sits behind my steering wheel. So pretty much this tells me my oil, um, my water pressure, my revs per minute, my speed I'm going. Um, when I need to change gears, the RPM light flash starts flashing, so that indicates to me when I need to change from um, any gears I want to. Because so over here we have the gear lever that um, runs through to the gearbox at the back of the car, through the car here, all the way to the back um, gearbox under all of this mechanisms and exhaust pipes and everything. And that's, it's a, it's a normal Beetle gearbox. It's got four gears. And um, unlike normal cars, it's on the right-hand side. I would say Formula V is, is the most, um, is the cheapest way to get into racing, or single-seater racing, if I can put it like that. Because it may, may not look like it, but um, Formula V racing is cheaper than go-karting. This event is so important to me because I'm currently leading the Western Cape Championship and this event can determine whether I stay in the lead or whether I drop down the order. If I win this event coming up, I will feel very happy because that means that I will uh, maintain my lead in the championship while I'll actually open the lead up in the championship. If I don't do so well in the event, I won't beat myself up about it. I'll say to myself, don't let this bother you. There's still two more races in the end of the year and then I'll keep going, keep trying my hardest.
After the break, we'll see if Byron can put pedal to the metal and get a result in his next national race day. In the meantime, if you have the thrill for extreme sports, tell us about it on our Facebook page. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Accelerators. We are burning rubber with 15-year-old Formula V driver, Byron. He's got three race meetings left this season and is currently leading the regional championship. Can he stay in gear for just three more race days? Let's find out. So first up is the Cape Town Kalani Nationals. In this race day, there will be about 25 Formula V drivers competing from all around the country. My chances of winning is not great because I'm up against tough competition and many of them are more experienced than me. But I'm going to use this opportunity to get some race experience and to perhaps learn a thing or two from the other racers. First, I have to do a qualifier. I line up in the pits with all the other drivers and the qualifier starts. I notice a strange noise coming from my engine and it doesn't sound too good at all. I make my way off the track and stop the car. I'm very annoyed because we spent most of the day and night setting up the car yesterday. So I qualified last, obviously because I didn't even do the qualifying. I made it down the main straight and I didn't even get to do the first corner, so I didn't get to finish a lap. I'm a bit irritated that we can't seem to find out what's wrong. Um, we probably will fix it if there's something wrong. But if we can't, then yeah, we can't ride. So we put the car back together again to troubleshoot it. And when I started the car, my friend John T noticed one of the suspension rods were fitted incorrectly. So we quickly refitted the wheels and I made my way to the starting grid for my race. And I had a bit of wheel spin off the start, so two people managed to get past me on the start. And I tried to stay a bit with them, but I took a very wrong line and I lost grip halfway through the corner and I couldn't get my power down as fast as they could. So they started pulling a gap towards turn two. So as I approached turn two, I saw someone's wheels lock up and smoke flying in the air. Then as I came closer to the corner, I noticed two people were went straight off the track. So we worked our way down through to turn three and I was quite a far distance behind the car in front of me because obviously I, oh, my tires were still cold and I was strugg struggling to warm them up. And I was trying to keep the guys that were behind me behind me. And then um, one guy came past me coming out of turn three. I ran wide and he came on the inside past me. 
Then we got down to the back straight. On this back straight, I can easily reach speeds up to 190 kilometers per hour, uh, depending on the weather and the day. If it's a really good day and the wind is behind us it, and we get slipstream, it is possible to go 205. He locked up his wheels in front of me, which left a bit of smoke in my face, but nothing terrible. So I was coming down the main straight and Richard Carr passed me on my inside and he got in front of me because he carried my slipstream down the whole main straight. And as we entered turn one, I braked a little bit early and I geared down early and I saw that he started losing the car once and then twice and then he gripped, but I was too scared to go on the inside in case he did lose it and he rammed into the side of me. But I jumped on brakes because of that and that caused me to lose speed going into turn two where I saw my um, teammate Elroy Vice come up on the inside of me. So I thought, okay, well, two people have passed me now in two corners, so let me try to sit on their tail. But I ran wide in turn two to let Elroy pass, so I lost my speed going into turn three. So then they already started pulling a gap and my car was already struggling with um, front wheel camber and I was sliding around and this just wasn't a lap for me. So as we come onto the back straight, they had pulled a massive amount on me. So I was pretty much just racing around the track. And then um, I managed to finish 11th overall out of 25 drivers. So it wasn't a bad day, but it wasn't a great day as well, considering it was my first national race in front of me. The car performed better because we did some changes um, throughout the day. So at the end of each race, we go through a process called scrutineering and this is pretty much where we have to go and park our cars and weigh our cars and then the scrutineers, the, the people that look at our cars after the race, make sure that we haven't got any oil leaks or um, any water leaks coming out of the car and they just weigh our cars and make sure everything's perfectly fine with the cars. This was my first ever Nationals in Formula V and I think that this Nationals, they taught me a lot. They taught me how to choose the right lines, they taught me where to brake, where not to brake. They taught me things that I would have never taught myself. The experience that I gained from the Nationals will help me in the next upcoming regional events because the, most of the regional guys here didn't manage to get proper racing in, whereas a few of us did. And that proper racing may not look like it teaches you a lot, but it really does. So I think that I've got a good chance of winning the championship this year for the Western Province. So this is the Power Series at Kalani and it's a local event where people from around Cape Town come to watch and enjoy some good motor racing. Some race days we have Kalani has a thing called a parade. So pretty much at lunchtime an allocated clasp of cars will go down to um, Malmesbury Strait which is between turn 3 and turn 4 and this will give the opportunity for the crowd to come onto the track and look at our cars and get in our cars and take photos with our cars and all of that. And after this parade we got ready. Okay, so I was on the line and I was starting in fourth position overall but in my class I was starting second. I got a great start off the line and I kept my pos second position. All the way through turn one, I was all clean. And then in turn two, I didn't expect the car in front of me was going to break as early as he did. And my front nose cone, it was very, very close to him, so I locked up my wheels, which means that I jumped on the brakes too hard, so it locked all my wheels up causing smoke and it caused me to spin off. So I had to come back onto the track, but I was obviously lost, I had to let it go.
I was trailing behind and managed to work my way up to third place, trying at least to get second. I was waiting for an opportunity to overtake him. I knew I couldn't take him on the corners, so I stuck to his racing lines. And when we were on the back straights, I used his slipstream to slingshot my way past him and stayed in second place. That's where I finished, but hopefully race two will go better and maybe get a first. I'd say that the area was on my side and the car side because the car's tires weren't to full working temperature yet, and I was pushing them to the absolute limit, and I was too close to the car in front and I had to jump on brakes, otherwise I would have driven straight into the back of them. So. After the break, we'll find out if Byron can end his second last race day on a high. Meanwhile, check out our Facebook page like and tell us about your extreme sport who knows you might be the next accelerator welcome back guys this is accelerate today we'll find out if 15 year old formula v driver byron can maintain his lead in the regional championship He's about to compete in his last race for this day. Will he see the checkered flag first, or will he be left in the dust? Let's find out. So after scrutineering, I bring the car back to the pits, and I refuel the car, make sure my tire pressure's all right, and I take my front nose cone off, so I'm able to check my brake fluid after each session. Checking your brake fluid after every race and every practice is very important because if you don't, it can be a very dangerous thing to play with if you don't check it. We got ready and we lined up for race two. I got a very good initial pull away, but then as soon as I changed to gear, second gear, I missed my second gear, so causing me to lose a lot of distance, so causing the car behind me to pass me. So as we entered turn three, I thought, no, I, I, I felt the car had a lot of grip, so I thought, let me go around the outside. So I, I moved, pushed the car into the outside position, and I managed to find some grip, and I managed to pass him on the outside of turn one and on the inside of turn two. Now I'm trailing behind William Weiss and I just can't seem to catch up to him because we're both doing our lines correctly. And only way for me to overtake him is to wait for him to make a mistake, which it doesn't seem like he's going to do. Even though I'm going at 190 kilometers an hour, I still can't catch him. Coming down the back straight, Damien White was on my inside and he passed me down the back straight because he used my slipstream to get past me. As I was coming down the main straight, my teammate, Elroy Weiss, decided to pop his nose in on the left of me, so I had nothing else I could do and I had to let him in. 
And as we came into turn two, I thought, let me chug around the outside of Damien, but I thought to myself again, no, it's very, uh, there's not much rubber in turn two, so I don't want to risk and put the car off the track. So I thought, fine, I'll just play a waiting game. So I stayed behind him. And I said, okay, so I, as we got into turn um, four, I got better drive out of him, used his slipstreams and yet again passed him. As we came down the back straight for the last time, Garth de Villiers passed us in his Formula Volkswagen and this car is a faster car than all of our cars. So it was a race to the line. And yeah, going down the straight, it feels faster than what it is and it, it's faster than what it looks because we are so low to the ground. And we got to the line and the overall results for this race was Elroy Weiss and then me and then behind me was William Weiss. At the end of the race, we go to scrutineering after the checkered flag to make sure that the um, scrutineers, the people that check our cars, can make sure that our cars don't have any oil leaks or any water leaks. I hopped out my car and I just gave my teammate Alroy Weiss, who came first, a little bit of a well done and he gave me a well done because we had a one-two finish and they just hand us a bottle of water because racing in a single-seater car with a suit can become very hot and very tiring. And uh, he was just explaining to me what I was doing wrong and what I must try and prove for next race. And I was just explaining to him what was happening with my car and all of that. I finished second in my final race. I'm quite happy about the result. It means I'm on track to becoming the youngest Formula V Series champion. I think my day went very well for me. And I, I, I think there's a lot of things we can improve on. But I wasn't expecting any of the things that happened to happen. But I always come into a race saying, just have them as much fun as possible and uh, see what comes out of it. I got second place overall for the day. I'm very happy about that because I maintain my lead in the championship. It was a very fun day and I'm sure everyone, all the spectators and everyone enjoyed it. This currently means that I'm still holding the championship lead by three points. Racing against more experienced drivers doesn't really intimidate me that much because I've come from a racing background where I've been racing since I was four. I've got the experience in my hands, but obviously sometimes it's a bit challenging. They know a little bit more than me sometimes, but I just put the pedal to the metal and go for it. So after two tough race days, Byron still leads the regional championship in his class. He's got one more race day to claim the title for the season. Tune in next week to see if he can make history by becoming the youngest Formula V champion in the country. We'll also catch up with eight-year-old gymnast Kaylee and see if she can grab a medal in a national event. Don't miss out. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page for more news and views.